everybody. Happy Friday. It is the last day of March. I mean, we say it every week, but man, time flies. It should be spring, hopefully, where you guys are. I know that the weather has started acting crazy. Spring weather. So hopefully you guys are getting some nice weather wherever you are. Today it's warm and beautiful. They said we might hit a record today in the 90s, which is very upsetting. <laughs> It's too early for that. Oh, gosh. I'm never happy, am I? I'm never happy. All right. I see you guys jumping on. Hello. Today is Rhino Ready. I am trying to... My blog post didn't go up, and then I had the wrong photo on there, so I'm trying to make sure it's all okay. Um, Pinkbuckaroo.com will take you to today's post. Um, and I, I cannot talk and do two things at once. And it will have all the details of today's projects. Um, today we are using, I'm trying, now I'm trying to pull up Facebook. I hate that I have to do this and look like I'm not paying attention. Hi everybody. Okay, you guys are there. You know, my phone right here will tell me like, boop, one person, boop, another person. But then when I pull it up here, I can see everybody. So, hello. It's so good to see you guys. Hope you've had a nice week. Um, Rhino ready? is the the uh, bundle of the day that's what we're using and surprisingly it hasn't sold out um it's an online exclusive and i almost <laughs> i would say almost everything that was the online exclusive i'm not sure what's happening there um oh. <laughs> um almost everything that was an online exclusive has gone on back order so I don't know why this one has it, because this is probably my favorite thing in the whole slew of offerings in the online exclusives. Um, and I'm going to show you guys, if you think that you don't need this, I'm going to prove you wrong today, okay? Okay, so oh my gosh, it has been a crazy, probably 24 hours. This time yesterday, Stampin' Up! released a ton of information all at one time for demonstrators. You know, when you buy the starter kit and you become a demonstrator, there's all these perks that you get. And my favorite perk of all, besides the discount, is early access to new catalogs. Um, it never, the excitement about a new catalog never goes away for me. It never has. I get like butterflies in my stomach. I'm super excited. And this year is even more exciting because it's a color refresh year. And a color refresh means that they've gone through our color families and they've analyzed color trends in fashion, home decor, um, art, all these things. And they rearrange our colors, pull colors out that aren't being used, put new colors in. And for me, who does this all day, every day, that really is like a burst of, um, I don't know, like fuel to my creativity to have new colors. So they released that information yesterday with a Facebook Live video. Um, I mean, my brain was like spinning. I couldn't like process it all. It was exciting. I know that's like my total nerd side, my Stampin' Up! nerd side. But then right after that, they released the PDF of the next annual catalog that comes out May 2nd. Am I saying it right, guys? May 2nd? Yeah. Um, and, okay, so that's like hundreds of pages of new, like, oh my gosh. And then at the same time, they released the last chance lists for both the current annual catalog and spring catalog. So literally, my brain was like, I cannot process all this information. So I did my very best to get the pertinent information to you guys, which is the last chance lists. Um, so those came out and it's, it's kind of weird this year, you guys. Um, the last chance list came out before, before it's active. I don't know how to even explain it. So if you are on Facebook, at the top of my Facebook page, I've pinned these two lists and I fixed this one. This one was a little, the first like 10 pages were covered up, but anyway, here they are. Um, this is all the things that are leaving, right? And so um, I posted that for you guys. Um, however, the lists are wonky. There are some mistakes in these lists. Um, 
it has all these little asterisk codes and there if you've already gone through the list you'll see like what huh um just know this sometimes a bundle like um let me think of something uh, the sweet citrus bundle stamps dies right you get the bundle price in the catalog when it first comes out but then in the new catalog if it carries over it's not bundle it's not the bundle price you have to order it stamp set and dies separately so on these last chance lists it'll say sweet citrus bundle retiring dot 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 those little asterisks which mean the product's not leaving but the bundle price is so that already is confusing but then this year we've been told that some of these products won't be in the new catalog but they'll be online exclusives so so now we've got to like you know figure out okay what's going online and then it's still current what's retiring what's you know ugh. so it's a big hullabaloo if you will for those of us who are like crazy about this stuff so if you print these out just know i would say i went through my catalog and i write a big r let me show you i write a big r next to something that's retiring it helps me to know um you know like oh, visually i can see what's retiring so some of the things i thought okay that seems questionable with the asterisks does that mean it's carrying over onto the online exclusives what does that mean so <laughs> and i've never done this before let me see if i can find one i put an r and a question mark because i don't know so i feel like i don't have all the information to tell you guys you know, for sure this is retiring because I don't know, like this was one of them, the teacup bundle. So I don't know. We will know on Tuesday for sure. So the list was kind of a just a, like, here you go, prepare yourself. But on Tuesday is when, if it has a discount price, that's when the discount will go into effect. So you might have thought, okay, look, um, Country Floral Lane is on sale. I'm going to go buy that right now or whatever. And then you get online and it's not on sale. That's because this is just letting you know what's coming. It'll all go on sale on Tuesday if it's marked on here as a sale. Okay? So I know that's clear as mud, right? It's just keeping it exciting for us. Anyhow, I know of a few things for sure that are retiring um, that were for sure you know, like there's no asterisks. As we go through, we'll, um, I don't know. I hate to even say this is retiring because then what if I'm wrong and it's an online exclusive? I don't know. There are a couple of things that I do want to let you know of for sure that are retiring. And one is the Stamparatus. I don't have it out. Shock. I mean, you could hear shock across, across the world, all Stampin' Up! demonstrators. Um, Stamparatus is retiring and it is a wonderful stamping tool. You guys see me, I use it all the time. Um, there, you probably know, were some legal issues with the design of the tool. And I think that they've just decided to, you know, like, okay, let it go for whatever. I don't know. But if you don't have it, I highly recommend that you get it. If you, like I order, I love the grid paper that goes in the Stamparatus, the six by six grid paper. You guys have seen me use that. That's leaving obviously too. So I ordered several packs of that because I want to keep that. Um, I ordered an extra mat to go in my Stamparatus. So if you're a Stamparatus fan, you need to make sure that you have all the things that go with the Stamparatus, which I just had that page open. Um, I don't know the future of that at all. All I know is what's been communicated to us, which is just a little blurb that because of the legal challenges, they've decided to retire it. So here it is. It's all on page 147. Stamparatus, the magnets, the grid paper, and the foam mat will all be leaving. I'm so sad about that, but that's the way of the world. Okay, so that, that's one thing I wanted to let you know. The other thing, and I'm going to flip the camera around so we can start. Where am I going to put this? So I can show you this. Um, the other thing we know for sure, for sure, are the colors that are leaving. And I didn't put on here the end colors that are leaving. We'll talk about that too. Turn you guys around real quick. 
I actually wasn't really shocked about any of these colors. Some of them are my, some of them are my favorites, but I can tell by what Stampin' Up! uses in their DSP and in their uh, embellishments, what colors either people aren't enjoying or Stampin' Up's just not using. So these are the colors that are leaving us, okay, you guys? Let's see if I could just zoom in a little bit. These are the color, no. Every time I do that, it gives this little pop-up thing and I can't, let's see if I can get that. Oh, all right, we'll just leave it. All right, so Bermuda Bay, Blushing Bride, which, bye bye we hate Blushing Bride because it's a muddy pink. If it looked like this when it stamped, we'd like it, but it doesn't. Mango Melody is the one that I knew was gonna go um, because they don't use it very much, but I love Mango Melody. Mary Merlot, I don't know if I've ever used Mary Merlot. Mint Macaron, I don't like Mint Macaron. Um, but I know some people love it and Stampin' Up! It loves it because it's a, we always have a lot of embellishments um, and paper that uses mint macaron. Pear Pizzazz, which we're using today. Pacific Point, Rich Razzleberry. Sahara Sand is another one that I've probably in 13 years used twice. Um, so Saffron, which that these two are my most used. So Saffron and Soft Suede. So I'm sad about both of those leaving. Um, so those colors, anything that's in those colors, you can rest assured that they will not be in the new catalog. That's ink pads, ink refills, cardstock markers, stamp and blends, ribbon, uh, the DSP packs, all of that. So if you have a favorite color, like I do, stock up on whatever it is you need, the ink refill, especially, I always tell everybody, make sure you get the ink refill. Okay. So those are the colors that are leaving. But to soothe our wounds of sadness, these are the new colors. Um, and I was actually surprised that most of them are returning colors. So if you've been around for a while, you'll know some of these colors. Misty Moonlight was a retiring in color maybe just last year. I don't know. It feels very recent. Pecan Pie is a new one. And I am excited about Pecan Pie because it's, it's obviously it's replacing soft suede. And it reminds me a little bit of baked brown sugar, which I really liked. Lemon Lime Twist was probably the most uh, favorite in color of all time. That one's coming back. Azure Afternoon. Azure, Azure. guys, what is Azure? I feel like I know that word, but I don't know it. I should know it. Anyway, that's like a turquoisey color. Berry Burst was a recent in color in the last, I don't know, five, six years. Lemon Lolly is very cute. So that would be our replacement for So Saffron. You can kind of see it's more bright and cheery. I like Saffron. It was a buttery, it's a buttery soft. This is more like a lemonade soft. Lost Lagoon and Pretty Peacock. We've talked about because that, those were, um, we already knew those were coming because of that new DSP online exclusive. Um, I'm just meh with those two, but maybe I haven't played with them enough. Fresh Freesia is a current in color right now that we thought was leaving, but is staying permanently. Bubble Bath, I'm very excited about. Bubble Bath will replace that muddy blushing bride. Um, pretty Peacock. And then Blueberry Bushel is a similar to Pacific Point, but it's a deeper, richer, bright blue, if that makes sense. Um, azure is a French word for blue. Okay. Oh, it's a Spanish word for blue. Maybe that's why I feel like I know it. So blue afternoon. Okay. Thank you. I'm like, I know that word. What does it mean? I was thinking it was a, it was a location. Okay. So Fiona says it's in South of France. Cote d'Azur is South of France v. Blue Sky. Okay. So it's obviously not English. <laughs> As, okay. Here. Um, Carol went to Google. Azure is a color between cayenne and blue on the spectrum of visible light. It's often described as a color of the sky on a clear day. Ooh, okay. All right. I like it. Like a bluebird sky, you know? All right. So anyway, those are the new main color. They're going to be either in the neutrals, the brights, subtles, or regals. And then our new in color collection that is replacing Polished pink. I was hoping polished pink would stay. Polished pink, soft succulent, evening evergreen, um, fresh freesia, and what am I missing? Oh, pale papaya. Hello. I love that color. Those are leaving. 
these are what are replacing it. And these are very um, rich, regal, kind of moody colors, if you will. Um, I've got to see them in person. I'm going to have to play with them because they don't jump out at me. You know, I'm a brights girl. I am. I'm a brights girl. But copper clay, I already like that copper clay because that, again, is kind of like that um, pecan pie-ish baked brown sugar color that I like. Wild wheat. I'm not sure. We're going to have to see that one in person <laughs> to see what that looks like. These will be great fall colors for sure in the fall when we do pumpkins and fall leaves and stuff. Boho blue. So that's kind of like, um, it reminds me of Marina Mist. Moody mauve. Mauve reminds me of my bedroom in the 80s. <laughs> mauve, I'm not sure. It's so trendy right now. My kids, that these are the colors they wear, that like muted mauve. Um, that kind of dusty blue, dusty pink. Um, these are, they're trendy. And then Pebbled Path I like too. That's kind of like, um, I don't know how to describe that. Kind of like a stone, um, I don't know. But anyway, in colors. I'm going to do something different for my in color club this year. I don't know what yet. But just know that those are the in colors. They're coming. They will work well, Stampin' Up! is brilliant with our colors. Stampin' Up! does colors right all the time. Um, so I have faith that when I get these colors in my hands, mixed in with other colors, that we'll be happy. So these new colors will be available um, a May 2nd in the new annual catalog. Unless you buy the starter kit in April, you can add these things to your starter kit. Demonstrators get to order in April as well. Okay, so there is that. Um, I will pin these, um, or I will add these links to these PDFs into the description of today's video um, for you. If you wanna, if you're a nerd like me and you wanna print them out and go page by page and mark everything that's retiring, you can do that this weekend. If you haven't done it already, just know that there may be, <coughs> it may not be retiring, it may be going to online exclusive, I'm not sure. We'll get more clarification on that next week. And next week, okay, next week, you guys, Facebook Friday is going to be Facebook Thursday because next Friday is Good Friday. Everybody's off. My kids will be home. So I'm going to do Facebook Thursday next week. And hopefully I will have my pre-order in time to show you all of these things. Okay? Okay, let's move on from that. Um, again, last chance list on Tuesday, things will be marked. Not everything will be marked down, but some things will be marked down six, to, uh, to 60%. Not everything. Some things. Some things will be 20%. Some will be 30 You know, it'll be a wide range. All right, let me fly through these things real fast because I talked about that for 20 minutes. Beautifully happy class. You guys are so funny. I told you I had collected a handful of these. I had, I thought I had a pretty good amount. Well, the class with the, including the stamp set sold out in like 45 minutes. I still have a couple of kits spots left. Um, for those of you that already own the stamp set, if you want to get the kit without the stamp set, um, I think I have four or five spots left for that. So email me for that link. Um, I've already started working on getting those cut and prepared. Um, Club Create in April will be Greatest Journey. The deadline to sign up for April's Club, Club Create is next Friday. And for those of you that want to know, May's Club Create will feature something new from the annual, the new annual catalog. And I don't know what yet. I have something that I'm leaning towards, but really guys, I got to get it in my hands and start playing with it before I can commit to it. Okay. So stay tuned. I probably will know by next Friday what May's Club Create kit will be. Okay, so this Club Create, you have one more week to subscribe. It's five cards, all featuring the greatest journey, which is something that's not carrying over. I'm very, very sad about that because this is a very unique bundle and I, I really love it. Um, okay, um, Paper Pumpkins, I have some left for those of you that missed out on this 10-year anniversary Paper Pumpkin kit. It has two stamp sets and a spot and nine cards. Please email me if you need one. I have a few extras for those of you that missed out. Okay, and last but not least, the Sweet Citrus class. This has to be, hands down, one of my favorite classes I've ever designed. 
I think I talked about it last week a little bit. This is a mega class, which means it has 10 projects, two each for each fruit, a card and a treat for the grapefruit, the orange, the lime, the lemon, and the coconut. It's a funny story. My daughter, my middle daughter, one of her best friend's birthday is on Sunday, and she is obsessed with the lemon loaf from Starbucks. So Emma ordered her, you guys know what a squishmallow is, those squishy um, stuffed animal things. She found one that was a loaf of bread, but it was yellow on the ends, and it looked like a lemon loaf. So she ordered her that, and then I last night baked a copycat recipe lemon loaf and it was delicious and then she we gave her we made her a card using the lemons so it was really funny anyway she was you know sometimes I am cool to my kids and when I pulled out a lemon card for her for her friend that is obsessed with lemon and lemon flavored stuff she was like mom you're so cool finally finally anyway this is a class to go for April um you can get it with the bundle without the bundle um, it has the 10 projects, the PDF. There's no video. It's just a PDF. Um, deadline is April 21st. It'll ship around April 28th. Um, that link I can't post online, but I did email it out this week in my email list to everyone on my email list. Um, if you didn't get it, just send me an email letting me know that you want to register for the Sweet Citrus class to go. And I will send that to you. Um, that's a class delivered to your mailbox. Um, it comes ready to stamp. You do need the stamps. It doesn't have any pre-stamped images in it. You need the stamps, the dies, and the embossing folder, the sweet citrus bundle, and the inks. Of course, you could substitute other things that you have if you wanted to. Okay, 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 we're done. We are ready to move on. This is Facebook Friday for Rhino Ready. Um, I'm surprised I haven't seen more excitement about this bundle because I love it. It's exactly the kind of bundle I love, you know, perfect for coloring with stamp and blends. So I was on all over it. If you haven't joined us for Facebook Friday before, I always pick a product. We do three projects with it. And then if you like the projects, I send them to you for free with a online order. Um, of $35 or more. Now I, it does look like I zoomed in and cause now I can't, and I can't see because that stupid pop-up message is there. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. You guys, let me, let me just fix that. There we go. Um, okay. So if you like today's projects, I will send them to you for free with an online order by Monday at midnight. Okay. I'm going to try to zoom out a little bit more. No, it did it again. <sighs> Come on. Um, <laughs> hold on guys. Hold on. I'm trying to fix this. There we go. All right. Finally, fifth time's a charm. Um, what was I saying? Okay. If you like today's projects, I send them to you for free with a $35 minimum order. That order has to be in by Monday at midnight and you have to use this host code. If you're waiting for the last chance list, that's fine. I'll have other projects next week that I'll be sending for free. Um, and I'll have a host code attached. It'll probably be the same host code. So on Tuesday morning, if you get up early to put your order in, because again, that, that last chance list is while supplies last. If you put your order in um, on Tuesday, use this host code, you'll get next week's projects. It's gonna be the Marigold stamp set. Marigold moments, is that what it's called? That's what we're gonna do next week. But this week we're doing Rhino Ready. So if you wanna order also, if there's something on that last chance list that you cannot live without, be, be cognizant of the fact that all of those things are while supplies last. So over the weekend, if it sells out, it won't even get to Tuesday to go on sale. I have looked at the last chance list like hourly today because I'm concerned about the things for my class, for my club. And, and I haven't seen a lot of new things added to it. If you go to the store right now, the Stampin' Up! store, and you type in um, the Lighthouse Bundle, that's retiring, I think, and then you see it on the store, it'll say low inventory. That would be one of those things that I might not wait on. Uh, you know, because low at any time that it says low inventory, it could go unorderable at any time, as soon as it sells out, and then it's gone. So just know that. Now, if you're like, whatever, I want to wait for the sale. There's nothing I can't live without. Well, then wait till Tuesday. Um, I would wait till Tuesday. The Marigold dies 
I noticed um, that we're going to be using next week are actually going on sale big time. Um, I think they were like $13 or something. So, you know, check that list out. Let me see. Hopefully I didn't misstate that. Marigold Moments Bundle. Marigold Mo Yeah, the Marigold Moments dies I'm going to use on Thursday are going down to $13. And the stamp set is going down to $9. So that means the bundle isn't going on sale, but the dies and the stamp individually are going on sale. That would be like $22 for that bundle. Insane. So make sure you're paying attention to that. Okay. That's next week. This week, <laughs> if you want to get the reinkers, all that cardstock, whatever you need, this is the host code to use. These are the projects that you'll get. They'll come like this um, end of next week. Um, you will need the stamps and the dies. I don't send any stamped images. I say that every week, guys. I never send stamped images, ever. It's a big no-no. It's like the golden rule of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You do not send stamp, pre-stamped images. Um, but I can send die cuts like circles. I can score your card bases. I can tie your bows occasionally. So just know that they'll come like that. You'll need the, the stamps or sub whatever you have. Okay, prizes. Cynthia Lynn, you are our winner from last week. Cynthia, I feel like I have your email address, I mean your mailing address, but just mail, email me just to make sure that I have the right one. Um, she won the Playing in the Rain. Thank you for sharing my video last week on Facebook. This week I have um, brushed bouquet and a beautiful flower set from the spring catalog. All you have to do to be entered to win is just share the video either on Facebook or YouTube and I'll pick a winner next week. Okay, have I covered it all? I'm not, I haven't been paying any attention. Yes, and my stamp set made it to the annual catalog. You guys, I almost cried when I saw Taco Fiesta in the annual catalog. I really did not think that it, I thought it was going to just be a one catalog stamp set. Really, truly, honestly, I did. So I was so excited when I saw the annual catalog. Uh, Michelle is asking, does the class, I'm assuming, does the class come with the treats? No, it does not come with all the candy and stuff, but I have links on the PDF for everything that I bought. Most of it came from Target this time um, and is easily accessible. The grapefruit was hard. That was a hard one. There's not a lot of grapefruit flavored things. I ordered that from Amazon. So the links will be there. Okay, are we ready? Thank you. Yes, many of you have emailed me telling me you were happy to see it. I, yeah, <laughs> it's like my baby is in the annual catalog. It's going to be around. Um, no, Debbie, I've done my class twice now, and it was a doozy. I don't think I don't think I ever want to do it again. <laughs> it was a lot. Okay, let's talk about this rhino. He's adorable, and I we I do have a treat item this week. But let me tell you guys, there is nothing in existence that is a rhino treat. Unless you like use a rhino cookie cutter to cut out some rhino cookies. There is no rhino treats. I didn't come up with anything special. You'll see in the last project. This is our first project. And I used this paper that we really haven't given much attention to. Let me pull this out. This is the Delicate Desert designer series paper and it's very beautiful the stamp set is okay I you know I'm not it's not my favorite but I do look at that if that does not look like Utah I don't know what does it is gorgeous so give this paper some attention um, I used this actually with my taco fiesta set um, it has some good just kind of southwesterny kind of deserty pa looking papers um, so that's what I use for the background of this card. Hold on, let me put this back. And I thought the soft colors was really pretty. Okay. Uh-oh. Oh, sorry. Someone's at the front door. Shh. Stop barking. <laughs> Hold on. He'll stop in a minute. Who is that? Oh, that's my Stampin' Up! order I was waiting for. Okay, good. Okay, sorry. Let's do our stamping first. We're going to stamp this rhino in memento black. And 
I have clean recordings, individual recordings of these projects. I know, here I go again, trying to mess this video up. Let's see if I can zoom in. Oh, it worked. Um, it's hard to see on a Facebook Live close up, um, but I have individual recordings over on YouTube where I can zoom in when I'm editing. So if you need like some good detailed um, help with your coloring, make sure you look at those videos. This guy, I'm going to show you three different ways to color him today. And this way I learned from somebody online, a, I don't know, a year or two ago, and I loved it. Um, all I'm going to do is take my smoky slate and I'm going to go around where all the black lines are and kind of outline it, but on the inside of the image. And then I'm going to take my color lifter and I'm going to pull that color to the middle of our little guy, his body. And that's going to give him a very light um, gray color. All right. So I don't know what you would call this, but I like it. And I've done it a few times and I think it's so pretty. In a little while, we'll color him full strength. But for now, we're going to just use this color lifter, color lifter pull, color, color pulling, maybe. I don't know. Okay, I did a little craziness right there. I don't know. That may not look good. Let's see. I like to use that brush end of my um, blender pen. And I have two. That one is has lost its has lost its oomph. So here, let me get my better one and it'll, it works a little bit better. All right, can you guys see how that just kind of pulls that color and it kind of bleeds all of that together? Um, bugle corn chips, oh, Connie, that's very smart. Yes, Becky, animal cookies do have a rhino and that was what my husband suggested. You know, I always go to my husband because he always has real good ideas. Strangely enough, he can come up with some really good ideas for this kind of stuff. Um, and that's, that's all he could come up with. But, um, I don't know. That just, that didn't do it for me. I feel like that's more circusy. I mean, you know, that would work. You're right. All right. I'm going to take my, what is this? Uh, petal pink and add some cute little cheeks right there to our little guy. All right, so now we're going to stamp Hello Friend, and I forgot my early espresso. We're going to stamp that right there. Also, I've done a lot of stuff ahead of time today because these projects are a little bit tedious, and I didn't want to be here until 5 o'clock. I stamped three sets of the grasses um, in pear pizzazz. That's one of those colors that's leaving us. It's kind of um in the middle between soft sea foam and old olive. Um, it can be used interchangeably, I think, with old olive really well. This I used, I stamped it on soft sea foam, which I love that color. So just just know that pear pizzazz is a good soft springy green. I cut the treetops also from pear pizzazz cardstock. And then I cut the tree bases from Soft Suede, another color leaving, and I put adhesive sheets on the back. Okay, but we're going to cut this guy out. And, okay, you guys, I have to show you a tip that somebody sent me this week, and I was like, oh my gosh. Now, maybe this isn't new to you guys. But to me and her, it was new, and I was shocked. Hold on. Let me get a, piece, a scrap piece. All right. You know last week when we used the B, and it's, a, it's hard to get those legs lined up in the B die? She said she saw somebody else do this, where they cut out the image from just a bit, you know, like a piece of cardstock, whatever. Now, this one is pretty easy to line up. But for the B, I just have to share this. You take that and you line it up where you want your die. You can see it perfectly. And then you set your die down in there and you know that it's going to be perfect. I mean, hello. It's like simple, but my brain never, ever, ever would have thought of it. 
See, and then it's perfectly centered. I don't know. I've told you guys before. Sometimes it takes me <laughs> a long time for the simple stuff, the easy stuff. All right. And then we're going to cut this one out with a little stitched banner. And there we go. That's from the Stylish Shape. Now, speaking of the Stylish Shapes, they are not on the last chance list, but the layering circles are. So I'm really confused by that. How can we not have circle dies? So I'm hoping and praying that those are one of the things that are gonna be online exclusive, which means it will only be online, it won't be in the catalog. Um, now, you guys, if you have laying circles, laying, layering a circle dies, then you're, you know, you're like, whatever, I don't care if they retire. But for a demonstrator, I try to only use things that are current, right? And that would be like, how will I cut circles? <laughs> Like if I can't use circle die, if we don't have current circle dies, I don't know. We'll see. It's there's some strange oddities on that last chance list, but I like the online exclusive portion because it leaves room in the catalog for other things. This again, this bundle is an online exclusive. You'll only find it online. All right, I've put the grasses there with um, dimensionals. Yeah, so, you know, when I went to show you guys that tip, I was afraid you all were going to be like, well, duh, I already knew that. Because I was like, where has this tip been all my life? And why didn't I think about it? And I'm, Joyce, wasn't it you that, that emailed me? And now I'm like drawing a total blank. Who, who emailed me? Why, why am I, I think it was Joyce. But again, I'm old and I can't remember anything. It has been a wild week here. We had our daughter's 16th birthday yesterday, our middle daughter. Oops, that's too, I don't like that. Let me go down. No, that's gonna be covered up. We'll, do, we'll put that there. Remember, I put adhesive sheets on those so that I could just stick them down. So she, this is my middle daughter. She got her license yesterday. They have to, in Texas, they have to take a driving test. When I was a teenager, there was no driving test. You just went and showed up. There was a written test that you had to answer some questions. And then you got your driver's license. Well, she had to actually go drive with a, with a you know, a DMV person. She was so nervous, but she did great. And she has her license. And let me tell you, woohoo! It's like freedom, man. One less amount of taxi cab that I have to do. All right, we've layered all of those. It is scary though, when they drive away for the first time by themselves. It's like, oh my gosh, does she really know how to do this? <laughs> she did, so far. She went through the line at Starbucks too, of course. Oh my God, these kids in their Starbucks. All right, um, early espresso ribbon. And then I am going to tie that together with some old olive ribbon. Um, you have the written and the driving test, Judy. You know, I feel like when I think back about that, how in the world could they have let us get our driver's license without taking a test, a driving test? I mean, back then I was super thankful that, that we didn't have to, but oh my gosh, that sounds like how, how do they know? We knew... <laughs> How to drive. And we had to take driver's ed. You know. But still, that seems seems just crazy. So now I guess they I guess they agreed and they changed it. And the kids have to take a driving test. And the funny thing was is that it was raining. It was raining here. You guys, you know it never rains here. And she had to have so many hours of rain driving, driving in the rain, which we didn't get because it never rains here. I mean, never. She said she had driven in the rain. I could not remember her driving in the rain. But of course, it was super rainy. She was, you know, it was very trafficy. Her test was at 8 a.m. Oh, I was like, this is, this is awful. And she was like, it's fine. I got it. It's fine. And she did. 
just miss it. She's my super independent one. She got a job when she turned 15. I was like, you can't get a job. You're only 15. She got a job. They hired her. She's been working. I mean, she's very independent. And now I don't have to drive her to work. <laughs> Yay. All right. You know, I just realized, did I zoom in too much? Were you guys able to see that die cut? I forgot I was zoomed in. Hopefully you guys were able to see what I did with that die cut. Hopefully. In Canada, there are three stages to get your license. This is done before you can drive on your own. Three stages, Willie. What are the three stages? That sounds like a lot. All right. I'm going to put this on with dimensionals and we are done. That's not too difficult of a card. And it says, hello, friend. You could change it to happy birthday, whatever you want. But I really like those soft colors. And you know, I usually want the brights, but I love these soft colors. I really like pale papaya. It's really, it's really a nice color. And I'm sad that it's leaving. Parallel parking. Emma had to do parallel parking as well. And we had practiced a lot. Um, and she hadn't gotten it right, but maybe once. And then we found a video that says, you, you know, you line up your mirrors and you turn the wheel once. That's it. And you back in until you see the license plate of the car in front of you in the middle of the passenger window. And then you turn your wheel all the way and then it go in. And when she did that, it worked. It was crazy. But she had to do parallel parking between two poles, which I thought made it a little more difficult because you didn't have those like things to, to look for. But she did, she did good. Okay, hopefully you guys <laughs> saw what I did. I um, know I'm talking a lot. Um, we are gonna move on to our next card. Uh, let's see, let me see what else I need here. Um, she has to get a parking pass for school, which she hasn't got, and she's parking illegally at school. I'm hoping she doesn't get in trouble. She, again, I was like, I got it. It's fine, mom. I got it. It's fine. I'm like, okay. I'm not a rule breaker, but my kids seem to like to break the rules. She even said, you're okay if I leave campus for lunch tomorrow? Um, excuse me? No, you can't do that. So we, she's just stretching her wings a little bit. We're having to pull her, rein her back in a little. She's just a little too independent. Okay. She got a Jeep Renegade, one of the little Jeeps. You know, they have the little, um, the lights in the back look like buttons. It's a very sturdy car <laughs> and it does not have very good shocks. I cannot stand riding in there with her. <laughs> it's awful. Um, so I, I missed, let's see. Oh, you flunked your first test, Mary. I know I was worried about her flunking her first driving test because she does not, she has, she's number 26 in her class of 700. She's super smart. She doesn't do well with failure at all. So I was a little bit worried about her, but she of course did fine. Okay. Enough about that. Here we go. Next card. We are going to use watercolor pencils this time. Um, and I saw a sunset somewhere on, um, somewhere, somewhere, I don't know, somewhere that had a torn paper sunset. So I was like, oh yes, we're doing that. So I'll tell you the colors that I use for that. But let's watercolor our little guy um, first. When you watercolor, you wanna use stays on ink. It will not run with the water. Memento will run with the water. Um, so I'm stamping this on watercolor paper. Um, watercolor, Paper is right now an orderable, unless it's come off, but it, it's coming back to the new catalog. The other paper you can use for watercoloring is called Shimmer White, and it is retiring. That is upsetting, because I love to use that paper. It's a sparkly white cardstock, and it's retiring. So if you like to color watercolor on Shimmer White, you need to order that. All right, um, here's another thing that is changing our watercolor pencils right now we have two um what do you call it? bundles of watercolor pencils right and so there are watercolor pencils in the new catalog but they're kind of reconfigured because the current set has some of our colors that are leaving so the new sets of watercolor pencils 
I, and I didn't look to see what colors they were, but they'll probably include a couple of the new colors. All right, so I'm just gonna take my watercolor pencil and I'm gonna color him in. If you've not used watercolor pencils before, they're just like, you know, your good old matte pencils from school. And you're just gonna color, but then when we use the water, it's gonna turn this into watercolor. And it's gonna smooth out all those lines and it's gonna really give you that watercolor feel. And you wanna add a little extra color to the places that you want to be a little bit darker. Okay. All right, so now I need to get a paper towel. And I'm just gonna take my water painter and add some water. This is a great way to watercolor if you feel intimidated by regular watercoloring because this is just, this reminds me when we were kids, there were little coloring books you could get that had the color on it and then you would just take a wet paintbrush and you would paint it. This is kind of that same um, concept. You're just laying that color down and then you just take your water and you move it around. You can also use a blender pen not a Stampin' Blend, but a blender pen, okay? So now he looks watercolored. I'm gonna add some Daffodil Delight to our little bird. And just move that color around a little bit. And we're gonna let it dry. I'm gonna add a little more color to him once he's dry to these little areas that I left white. But for now, we're gonna let that dry. All right, let's move that out of the way. Okay, for our, um, it was actually not a Stampin' Up card that I saw, Robin. It was something different. It was some other company. Um, okay, so for this card, it is Knight of Navy card base, and I have cut a Knight of Navy frame using the um, fabulous frame dies. By the way, did I mention the PDF? There's a free PDF over on my blog. It has all the supplies and it has the measurements for these cards. It also has the links for those things that I've talked about. And it has the host code. Is it the same one? Yes. It has the host code if you want to put that order in. Okay. So you're going to start out with a piece of Highland Heather. And then I've cut these other pieces into about an inch and a half. Um, strips and you just want to tear the edges like that all right and I'm gonna do Highland Heather gorgeous grape and then we're gonna do pumpkin pie like that and then mango Wah, so sad it's leaving mango melody and then, uh, ooh, Crush Curry, which is a color I really did think was gonna retire and it did not. Crush Curry. And then last but not least, we've got Daffodil Delight. And I'm gonna adhere all of that and then I'm gonna trim it all off, okay? Um, what was I gonna say? I don't know, I was gonna say something about that color. Now I don't remember what it is. All right, so we're gonna just start here. I made, I always like to make my strips longer than the piece that I am putting them on because if I don't, then inevitably, my piece is always like t a tiny bit too short, <laughs> always. So I like to just make them longer, that way I can just trim them off. All right, and then it is, Crush curry. And last but not least, we've got, oh, come on. We have got Daffodil Delight. I'm gonna turn that over because I got that adhesive kind of, meh. let's see if I can get that off. There we go. Daffodil Delight. Okay, so now let's get our trimmer, Stampin' Trimmer. And 
I did go over this edge. I'm just gonna trim that so that I have a straight edge to start with. And we're gonna put that on there. Just cut these pieces right on off like that. Okay, now you're gonna take that Knight of Navy frame And I'm gonna go lightly, ever so lightly. Whoop, that wasn't light right there. But you don't want it to squish out on the sides. You know what would be good here? Adhesive sheets. I should have put adhesive sheets on there before I cut it out. Okay, there we go. Now, this time, and I've seen several samples online where people are using these like as a silhouette. You know, like the sun is setting and this is the silhouette. So that's what I did. I cut these in a basic black. Again, um, let's see, I'm gonna put that one about right there. Actually, let's put this in. This is like a hill, some dirt, I don't know, pile of something also in the background. Okay, it's just silhouetted in the sky. And I put the adhesive sheets on the back. Did I say that? Adhesive sheets, I love them. I love them so much. Okay, come on. And we'll put this one is a little bit shorter down here. I love the look of these trees. They're very African, like they're from Africa. On the in the safari, you know, out in the, I don't know, what do they call it? The, what's the word I'm looking for? Out on the, <laughs> I can't think of the word. It'll come to me in a minute. All right, we've got that. Let's stamp our sentiment in Versamark. And we're gonna stamp that right about there. Oh, I forgot to use my embossing buddy. Darn it, let's see. Serengeti, Linda, that's what I was thinking. That was the word I knew. I kept saying safari in my head. I'm like, that's not the right word. Serengeti. <sighs> yes, that was the word I was looking for. All righty, now let's hit it with a heat tool. And again, I made this piece bigger than I needed it so that I could cut it down in case I, in case I stamped it crooked. And we'll just trim this right here like that. There we go. And I think we need that again. Let me clean up. I got all kinds of scraps over here. All right, and so now we're gonna take this and just adhere it. So in my new studio, I have a place under those big windows, I've showed you guys the pictures, where I'm hoping to do all my videos. And um, I realized the other day I picked out countertops that are white. And I'm like thinking, that probably wasn't very smart. So I'm gonna have to be really good about using my grid paper. I don't, I'm not good about that at all. I constantly have adhesive, ink everywhere. So we'll see how long I can keep that countertop clean. It's that quartz, I think that's what it's called, you know, the man-made stuff, not granite. And I've read online that it can stain, but who knows, we'll see, we'll see. I'm glad you guys like it, thank you. Thank you for the compliments, very sweet. Oh, let's add, before I cut this out, let's finish I'm gonna add just 
a little bit of dark. And one thing I will tell you guys, the first time I did these cards, I colored in his horn. I don't know why. And I realized later that his horn should stay white. So please forgive my faux pas. And I'm gonna color his toenails in. And his tail, just making it darker than the rest of him. And those little sprouts of hair right there. Okay. Now, again, let's cut him out. Hopefully you guys can see what I'm doing. I'm not going to do that little trick this time. I'm just going to go for it. These are, these are easy to line up. That B, that B that we used last week gave me lots of issues. And those, you know, those word dies that I love so much, the charming sentiments that have a very small outline around it. I tend to get those off too. So doing that would work well there too. Okay, we are ready to add our last piece. No embellishments on this card. I really didn't think he needed it. Super cute by itself. It's a great day. You could use this for birthdays, for congratulations, all kinds of things. Or you could change the sentiment. Always change the sentiment if you don't like it. Okay, so there we go, card number two. And now we've got one more project. And it's a, it's a big one. I saved the and it's not complicated. It's just the most, the one with the most steps for last. All right, good. I'm glad you guys like it. Different. I wanted to do a sunset and I thought I'm always doing watercolor sunset. So let's do something different. And I saw that torn paper and I loved it. Okay, so for the treat, for our treat today. And I also noticed my photo on my blog doesn't have the bow. I don't know what happened to it when I took the picture. So I listed it on the supply sheet, even though the photo doesn't have it. Okay. This has a lot of pieces. Let me move this over here. Inside my box. I don't think I even said what was inside of it. Did I change the description on the blog post? Now I can't even remember changing it. You know, sometimes I just copy and paste from the, the week previous, and sometimes I forget to change things. I can't remember. Anyhow, inside is a Twinkie. <laughs> I mean, you know, Hippo would be good for the Twinkie. Why not the rhinoceros? These are strawberry Twinkies. Have you guys seen these? Limited edition spring strawberry Twinkies. And I noticed at my grocery store, they have banana Twinkies. They have lots of different flavors of Twinkies now. So if you don't want to use a strawberry Twinkie, you can use a regular Twinkie, okay? Okay, this has lots of steps. Let's make the box first. And we're going to need our Simply Scored. Thanks, Cynthia. Cynthia, did you see you won the prize? Hopefully you were here at the beginning. Make sure you message me or email me. Congratulations. You are the winner. All right, we are using Pale Papaya. Again, I just love this color. Um, okay, we're going to start. And I know I've zoomed in. I'm afraid to touch it anymore. So just hang with me, okay? This piece, the largest piece is 9 and 3 fourths by 7. And remember, it's on our PDF right here. Oh, my gosh, it's already 3 o'clock. I'm going to be late today. Okay, on the PDF over at pinkbuckaroo.com. On, let's start at the long side. 1 and a fourth, 2 and a half, 7 and a fourth and eight and a half. Turn it to the short side, score it at one and a fourth, two and a half, four and a half, and five and three fourths. All right, so that's the little drawer that the Twinkie goes in. Um, next is the little tunnel that it slides into. This piece is four and seven eighths by seven and a fourth, and we're only gonna score it on the long side at two and an eighth, three and three eighths, five and a half, six and three fourths. Okay, so bone folder, you want these nice and crisp. This box will have a fold over edge, which means that the edge is rounded. 
And I also like to do that in these boxes because you're you're pulling that box and you want it to be strong there. So it's it's a double layer of cardstock. Now you're gonna cut out these three on all four corners and then just cut that one score line. All right, this is where I always think of Tetris, the L-shaped piece. Do you guys see there's a Tetris movie coming out? And it's not a like a fun movie. It's like the history of Tetris. I saw it's rated R, so it's not a kid movie. I love Tetris. All right, so again, make sure you when you're cutting this flap, you're cutting it the same way on all four from the outside. Okay. Speaking of TV, have I watched anything? Nothing. Well, Ted Lasso, but I am sure everyone here has already heard of Ted Lasso. It's so good. Last season is on Apple TV. Um, what else? Nothing. Oh, no, there is something. Did I tell you guys about Natu Natu? I'm probably saying it wrong. It's the Indian movie that won Best Song in the Academy Awards, and it's from India. And you can find it on Netflix. And you have to type in RRR. That's what it'll come up. If you type in not to, not to, it'll come up. But it comes up as RRR. It is a spectacle. It is something to behold. It is weird. It is funny. It's sweet. It's cute. It's sad. It's hilarious. It's weird. And it's so good. It's also over three hours long. Okay, I'll tell you more about it in a second. But let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to cut off the corners of all these pieces, okay? And if you, do you guys remember Slumdog Millionaire? And it was like Bollywood at the end. I, I would say that this is similar to that. Um, it, and, and go into it with an open mind. It's so strange but it is also funny and cute and the cinematography is really interesting. Um, it kind of reminds me, so you know when you watch like a Marvel movie and they do something that's like, that can never be done in real life. Like you're like, yeah, right, okay. Well, that's kind of how this movie is with some very unrealistic things, but it's just so funny and so cute. And the, you just love the characters so much. So find it on Netflix. RRR. Like literally the letters. RRR. And then it says not to, not to. That's the song, I think, that won. Um, I think that's what it's called. That's my plug this week. That's what you should watch. And just know it's weird. But it's also awesome. Okay, <laughs> and that concludes my entertainment weekly report. Now, you guys have to share if you found anything good. We're always looking for good new shows or movies. Um, I have put my adhesive on these tabs. If you need clear directions on this box, make sure you go to YouTube because I have an individual recording of this box that you can go over there and see without all the entertainment news and <laughs> gossip. Um, if you watch the Oscars, and I know not many people watch the Oscars, and I will tell you that we watch several of the Oscar-nominated movies and really, like like a lot of years, didn't like them, weird. Um, we watched the Elvis movie. I'm from Memphis. Originally, my parents are from Memphis, so we really are into Elvis. We watched that, and it was kind of okay. Um, we watched Everything Everywhere All at Once. My kids, my teenagers, Loved that movie. I thought it was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. Um, and it's the one that won all the big awards. I did love the little guy from The Goonies. He was the husband in the movie. Um, but this Not To Not To movie is just truly unlike anything else. All right, so you put your adhesive on the outside of these tabs. You fold them over. And that gives you that nice rounded edge. Also, back to the movie. <laughs> My husband was talking to a friend who is from India, actually, and he told him that there are several movies by that same direct director that are similar. So if you like it, I don't know what they are. We're going to try to find them. 
All right, back to our box. I have the, the iPad covered up. Um, person of interest, Patricia, what is that on? I haven't heard of that. The Night Agent on Netflix. Night Agent. Okay, that's new. I think I've seen that. And you guys liked it. It's good. Shadow and Bone. Heather, we watched first the first season of that. And we started it the other night. And I was like, I can't remember. We need to go back and watch like a summary or something before I can watch this. But I remember really liking the first season of that. You're going to put adhesive on this half inch tab right here. And you're going to fold it there and there. And that's going to make that little tunnel for you. Okay. All right. Now for all the other little pieces. I've done a lot of this ahead of time. I have again cut out grasses. I stamped the grasses in um, crumb cake on craft. I've cut out some bushes or hills or whatever they are in craft. Craft is leaving the catalog. So if you like craft paper, stock up. The These leaves, guys, what are they called? Mon Monstero, Montero, something like that. My oldest daughter, she loves this plant. Cut those out of Mossy Meadow. Um, we're going to stamp our guy, the other, the third rhino. Um, oh, the way home, Carol, is so good. Like, I'm sad that we now have to wait however long for the next season. Very good. I loved it. All right. Memento. And then we're going to stamp the sentiment in Calypso Coral. And we're going to use one of the conversation bubble dies to cut that out. All right. Let's color him. I'm going to kind of go through this quickly. The leaves in the rhino set. Yes, they are. Right here, they're the little ones. So there's another set that's an online exclusive that are the bigger leaves that look like that. Um, and they these are the little ones. I don't know, Lane, I love craft paper and I'm very sad that it's leaving. I use it all the time. All right, I'm gonna use my light smoky slate. And I'm just gonna go around. I'm using the bullet end of my Stampin' Blend. I did a, a little online event last week with my friends, Ange McKay and Rhonda Wade. And it was for our teams. And we talked about the way that we color and we all color differently. So if you don't do it the way that I do it, it's okay. I teased Anne. She does it the opposite way. She does dark first and then light. And I teased her. She was doing it the wrong way. But what we found is that really you get the exact same end result if you do your shadows first. All right. So now I'm going to take that dark and I'm just going to go around where there would be a shadow. So under his mouth, right here where his legs are bent down around the bottom like that and maybe a little bit over here this color is kind of dark already so i didn't want to add too much all right and then you just take your light and you blend 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 i think i'm going to leave his toenails white this time i like to get the brush in sometimes when i feel like it's too harsh of a line and just kind of Flick that color over like that. Okay. All right. Let's cut these out. And then we'll do our little, we're doing another little sunset. This time with the small blending brushes. All right. We'll get this little guy. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Hold on. Well, let's see. I'll just do it right here. We forgot the little, what's it called? The horn? The party horn we'll do that down here and we're going to color that with wrong end calypso coral i'm using the de the de delicate desert die delicate oh my gosh delicate desert designer series paper again all right, so just dark and light Calypso. 
All right, now we're ready. Put that right there. Here's the conversation bubble. This is not from the Rhino dies. It's from the conversation bubble dies. That's in the spring catalog. The little party horn. Make sure everything is where it's supposed to be. Hold your breath and run it through. Ah, uh-oh, don't wanna lose that one. All right. Now, last but not least, we're gonna take our grid paper and this is the Stamparatus grid paper I was talking about that I love so much. And yes, whoever said last week, you can just cut your big paper down. You can, but it's just, I don't know. I like having it like this, easy. We're gonna start at the bottom with Daffodil Delight. And you can see that you're gonna cover up a lot of the bottom. So the second time I did it, I, um, did I not cut out? Oh yeah, here it is. The second time I did it, I went higher with the yellow so you can see a little bit more of it. So I'm using the small blending brushes, which I love, 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 love because I don't know really why, but they, I feel like they're easier to hold, easier to use. And I just, I, I love them. All right, so there's Daffodil Delight. We're gonna take mango melody wah, wah. and we're gonna do the other side meeting in the middle or about two-thirds of the way up really not in the middle notice i lay my brush or my uh yeah my blending brush on the grid paper first so i don't give get any of those harsh hard marks and then last see that, that right there looks like i did too I did some harsh marks, but that's going to be covered up, so we're okay. Calypso Coral, just around the top. Okay, like that. Um, oh, yeah, we want to do some of these, too. I cut out too many. We only need, we only need three, so... That one, that one, that one. I'm gonna take my crumb cake, add some texture to the top of these dirt hills or whatever they are. And I think we're pretty much ready to put it all together. Um, one thing I'm gonna do to this sentiment just because I haven't done enough steps yet. <laughs> I stamped the sentiment in craft, or no, I did Versamark. I've been using Versamark quite a bit lately on Calypso Coral and embossed it with white embossing powder. And I'm just gonna cut out the word wild. And I think we need a many dimensional. And we'll put that over that one, just to, I don't know, just to fancy things up a little bit. All right, so our Twinkie is in its tray. Let's slide it in like that. I've got the Delicate Desert Designer Series paper. Do I have adhesive? Yes, right here. It's gonna go right there. Looks like it's a little bit too long. Can I cut a straight line? Let's see. Yes, I can. All right, we'll start with our setting sun or sunset in the back. A couple of dimensionals there. I'm gonna have it kind of sticking off a little bit. And then we're gonna do the grasses and we've got three grasses all together. And we'll do one there. And actually let's move, let's move that over there and that over there. And we're gonna put this one towards the left side and we'll put our rhino right there. 
And then we've got our ant hills, maybe. <laughs> our sand dunes. And we'll put some many dimensionals on these. And I'm gonna put one there. I think maybe only we need two. There we go. Oh, well, that one's like hanging off. There we go. Maybe that one needs to go down a little bit like that. And then our little guy, our cutie little rhino. Now this is a birthday box. So we're gonna give him the little, the little horn. And what I found is that for it to look a little more realistic, I'm cutting off that white edge right there. And I'm gonna use a blue dot. And then just bump it up right against his mouth like that. I cut out a Calypso Coral party hat. And I'm gonna use my dark Calypso Coral Stampin' Blend. I'm gonna color in the top. And then it has little, little spots on it. So I'm just gonna put a little color in those spots. And another glue dot on him right there. Let's add in our little conversation bubble. And then we'll add in our cute little leaves. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of glue like this. Put one there. And I'm kind of tucking them back behind the hills. And we'll put one back here behind him like that. And one more. One more right there. All right, and last but not least, a window pane. You know, the edge of this table is rough and it is catching my shirt. I keep getting little holes in my shirt right where I lean up against this table. Window pane, ribbon, retiring leaving. I use this ribbon a lot. I'm using it next week again with our marigold moment. And ta-da! There we go. Fun treat box. You can find Twinkies anywhere. Grocery store, Target, Walmart. Easy. Those strawberry Twinkies came from my local grocery store. We, we use H-E-B. That's our grocery store. But I'm sure you can find them in your area. Okay, so I've got one more card to show you. So hold on, let's just review. We made three projects today using the Rhino Ready. Hopefully I convinced you that it's super cute and you need it. Um, if you would like this as a make and take kit, I will send it to you for free next week if you put in an order between now and Monday at midnight using this host code. Um, it has to be over $35 before tax and shipping to qualify. Um, if your order is over $150, don't use the host code because then you're gonna earn stamp and rewards and I will still send you the free projects, okay? I just wanna make sure you guys get the rewards if your order is over $150. Okay, I've got one more project that I will show you on Monday, and it is using those big leaves from that other set, that other online exclusive set. I did a watercolor background on this one with watercolor paper, and uh, I used the birds this time. And I'll have details on Monday for this card. All right, you guys, next week, remember, it'll be Facebook Thursday, not Facebook Friday, so Tuesday, I mean, two o'clock on Thursday, two o'clock central, and I'll have three Marigold Moment projects for you, and I hope you guys have a great week. Hey, y'all in the middle right there, North Texas, Oklahoma, Memphis, all that, you guys be careful tonight. There's some bad weather coming, all right? All right, I'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye.